Welcome back to Bargaining in War. In this lecture, we're going to see an alternative way of modeling wars and efficiency. In the standard framework, we use CA and CB to represent that. These are the costs that each party directly pays if they fight. It captures the amount of lost treasure, the number of buildings being destroyed, and the number of lives lost on each side. But war may be inefficient for a different reason. Think about what's going on with the Syrian civil war. Each side is trying to fight to become the government. Whoever is the government at the end of the war will then be able to tax the country and bring in some revenues. But compare those revenues to what's going to be in the hypothetical end of the Syrian civil war to what was going on before the civil war started. The very fact that a war is being fought is forcing people to flee the country, is causing businesses to be destroyed, and so forth. So that after the war is over, there's going to be less tax revenue to go around, regardless of who wins. The way that we can model this sort of cost is through what we're going to be using as pi costs. So pi is going to represent a value that is strictly between 0 and 1. If the states negotiate a solution, then they get to divide that full 100% of one value. If instead they fight, then the value of the prize is going to be shrunk to just pi, which is something between 0 and 1. So it's strictly less than what we would be able to divide if we were to negotiate a solution. And specifically, the amount that is going to be lost is 1 minus pi. That is our new inefficiency for more. So let's go ahead and work through the ultimatum game under this alternative assumption. So we're not going to have CA and CB. We're just going to model war as being costly through this pi value. And in this game, it's an ultimatum game, so A makes a demand. Still X between 0 and 1. And B accepts or rejects, just like before. The difference is going to be in the payoffs. So if we have an accepted demand, then A's payoff is going to be X, and B's payoff is going to be 1 minus X. In the event of war, A prevails with probability P and captures the entirety of what's left of the pi, which is now just going to be the value pi times P. Same thing going on with B, except for B, the probability of winning is 1 minus P, and so B is going to capture that value of pi with probability 1 minus P. Now that we've worked through all those payoffs, we just go through backward induction to solve this game. So let's think about B's accept or reject decision. B is going to accept whenever 1 minus X is greater than or equal to pi times 1 minus P. And so if we solve for X, what do we get? We get X has to be less than or equal to 1 minus the value pi times 1 minus P. So that is B's decision rule. And so if we think about what A should do, A can divide the pi in one of two different ways based off of what we just learned about here. So let's think about the different X choices that A can make. If it chooses something to the left of one minus pi times one minus P, then we have B accepting, as long as it's to the left of it, and if A demands more than that, then that's not going to be sufficient for B to accept, so B rejects. The value for A in any of these demands on the left is the value for acceptance, which we saw earlier is X for A. And the value for rejection is just going to be this quantity right here, pi times P. So let's think about whether A would like to make an acceptable demand or intentionally fight. Well, you know, given what we've learned about before with war being inefficient, the fact that war is still destroying surplus even in this pi cost case means that it should be the case A is going to make an acceptable demand. So the question then is going to be what acceptable demand is A going to make? What optimizes that acceptable demand? And why is that optimal acceptable demand better than getting this payoff or rejecting? Well, let's think about why there is only a single possible optimal acceptable demand. Why is it 
that A will never demand anything strictly less than this cut point. Well, if it demands something strictly less than that cut point, B is going to accept, and A's payoff is just X. But notice that A could deviate by demanding epsilon more. And if it does that, B still accepts, and now A is getting strictly more because it's demanding more, and it's still having an accepted offer. But that logic holds true all the way on this interval until we get to the cut point. At this point, if A tries demanding a little bit more, B will switch from accepting to rejecting. So the optimal demand for A is 1 minus pi times 1 minus p. So let's just verify now that A prefers making that optimal acceptable demand to intentionally sabotaging the negotiations by instead choosing something in this region and getting pi times p. Well, all we need to do is multiply this out. And if we do that, we see that we have a pi times p on both sides, so those things cancel, and we're left with 1 minus pi is greater than or equal to 0. And that's true. So that is what we're going to expect. A is going to demand 1 minus pi times 1 minus p, and b will accept. You'll notice that there is a good connection in the end of this proof to what we've been seeing beforehand. Remember that 1 minus pi in this setup represents the inefficiency of war. That's how much is being lost by the states fighting. And what we see is as long as that inefficiency is positive, as long as stuff is being destroyed, then A is going to make this resolution that both parties prefer to fighting. And that has a direct connection to the end of our proofs under the normal circumstances, where we would need CA plus CB to be some positive value for us to have a negotiated settlement there. This, in the pi case, is the inefficiency for war, and this, in the standard case, is the inefficiency for war. So we have the same sort of end game conclusion, as long as inefficiencies are there, we get a settlement. It's a nice, neat connection to finish things off. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope to see you next time. Take care.